I, my name is Susan Cruz. I am the executive director of the Community Climate Collaborative. Thank you so much for being here this evening for yet another Zoom event. Uh, I know we're all weary of them, but we really appreciate the opportunity to share with you our progress in a way that's safe for everyone. And we're very hopeful that we can all be together in person in the new year. Actually, we have an event coming up, I'll tell you about a little later, where um, we could be in person. So uh, before we get to program content, I want to quickly introduce Maggie Stokes. You can see her um, uh, in, you know, on all the participants up above. She is C3's Director of Development, joined our team in July of 2021. She'll be helping out this evening, greeting folks as they arrive and keeping track of questions in the chat. Um, for those of you who elected to receive them, I hope you're enjoying the snacks and drinks provided by C3 partner Harvest Moon Catering. Uh, we, we are recording this webinar, I'll say it one more time, uh, for those who are unable to attend. Maggie will keep track of questions uh, throughout the event and so that we can save all those to the end and get through the presentation. All right. So tonight you'll hear a lot from me and a little bit from Gray McLean, our board president and founder. Gray, I promise I'll try to leave you some time. Many of you are current C3 supporters and community partners. For those of you who are new to C3, uh, we're going to give a brief background on our mission and theory of change before reviewing highlights of our work over the last six months. We will also look ahead to the remainder of 2021 and into 2022 and talk about ways that you can get involved. I want to take a quick moment to thank all of those who helped to sponsor this event. Hopefully next year we can celebrate climate action in person. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and read all the names on this list. There are so many great supporters of C3, but I do hope you take to the time to read them. If you know someone on this list, uh, feel free to drop them a note either in the chat or over email and thank them for helping to build a cleaner, cleaner and more just community right here at home. The climate crisis, uh, as we know, is intensifying every year. We see evidence of it more and more frequently. Uh, we must reduce our emissions by 45% by 2030 and position our communities to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. The city of Charlottesville and Albemarle County have adopted these goals along with many other localities across the Commonwealth. The vast majority, 88% of Virginians live in urban and suburban communities like ours. We all need to do our part to reach these goals, yet local climate action is not prevalent. That's where C3 comes in. We catalyze action at the community level and foster climate leadership through our programs and advocacy. How do we do it? We have four core components of our approach. We work to understand both the sources of greenhouse gas emissions and the opportunities to reduce them. We invest significant resources in community engagement, we focus on constituencies traditionally left out of conversations about climate. Climate change will impact all of us and C3 is building a broad coalition to address it. We like to celebrate at C3 whenever one person, one business or one governmental entity takes action to reduce emissions, you are sure to find C3 there ready to celebrate and encourage others to follow that example. We also know that individual action alone won't be enough. That's why we recommend policy change to help our community reach carbon neutrality and ensure that we are moving all members of our community forward into a clean energy future. I am so fortunate to work with this incredible group of advocates. You've already met Maggie Stokes, but I also want to introduce Caetano de Campos Lopez, our Director of Climate Policy, uh, and Sarah Delgado, our Operations and Finance Manager, who are on the call tonight. 
Latricia Giles, our Residential Climate and Equity Program Manager, and Terry Kent, who I think might have just come in, our Director of Programs and Communications, were just out in Washington Park this evening talking with community members about lowering their energy costs. So hopefully um, Terry made it on and Latricia will be able to join us a bit later. The C3 Board of Directors is really an amazing group of leaders um, that I'm proud to work alongside every day. Gray McLean is our board president, Kelly Palmer, our vice president, Morgan Butler, Carl Quist, uh, Pete Borchus, Paige Perriello, Harrison Wallace, Devin Welch, Barbara Brown Wilson, Ryan McCall, and Emily Francis. Uh, many of you, if not all of these folks are on the call tonight. Thank you um, truly for all you do for C3. Oops, somehow we went backwards. All right, there we go. It's been a very busy 2021 for C3. Uh, so I'm just gonna share a few highlights with you since our last virtual update six months ago. Since our founding, C3 has engaged with local schools, both in on-site emissions reductions and providing opportunities for advocacy. During COVID-19, we supported students, teachers, and schools with hands-on learning climate opportunities. You might remember from the spring that C3 created climate-focused activity kits that were delivered to roughly 800 fourth grade students in Albemarle County and 400 fifth graders in the city of Charlottesville. We continued our youth leadership programming into the summer by hosting our first climate justice summer program. We hired teen interns and worked with uh, a dozen fourth and fifth grade students at the Boys and Girls Club. A uh, special shout out to C3's Latricia Giles and former staff member Erica Gaines, who led this effort. And you can see them in that bottom right photo with the director of the Bridge Progressive Art Initiative, our partner, uh, one of our partners from the summer. Also really grateful for UVA's Equity Center, Conscious Capitalist Foundation, which is I think now Yuhuru Foundation, uh, who were also our partners in that effort. In addition to learning general concepts about climate change and advocacy, our students worked to create the first climate justice mural in Charlottesville. One of our teens, Quay Gaines, is working still, we're almost finished with a documentary about our summer program. So I'm gonna show a brief clip of some of the footage that he is putting together. I can't wait to see the finished product. Um, and the good news is, is that you can come see it too. Uh, the last shot on that video was of the American Red Cross building on Rose Hill Drive where our mural will be installed. It's actually going up right now. Uh, so I'd like to invite you all to an outdoor celebration event on November 17th at 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, if you don't know where the Red Cross building is on Rose Hill Drive, if you drive down uh, Rose Hill, just look for the mural. It, you can spot it from the road and it's exciting to see it going up. Dr. Jeremy Hoffman, who's the director of the Virginia Science Museum is gonna be our special guest. He actually made this temperature strike graphic that our mural was based on and he's gonna be speaking at the event. Our, you will also be able to get to see Quay's finished documentary at the end of the evening as it starts to get dark and our, you can meet our teens. 
we'll have food on site and you're all invited. So check your inboxes next week for a formal invitation. We know that effective and equitable climate policies will be crucial to creating a carbon neutral community. This fall, we analyzed two areas that will impact our ability to get there. Terry Kent from C3 worked with eight low-income families in Charlottesville and Albemarle County over the course of a year. Together with our partner at LEAP, we fully upgraded all their homes to electric furnaces, hot water heaters, um, and ranges and other equipment. This will allow their emissions to reduce every year as Virginia's electricity grid gets cleaner. Terry collected energy data both before and after electrification and C3's Director of Climate Policy, Caetano de Campos Lopez, completed an analysis of the results. Across eight homes, we saw reductions in energy use, energy costs, and greenhouse gas emissions, as you can see of a bottom graphic on your screen. Emissions are already down across these eight homes by more than 40,000 pounds, and with expected grid improvements, they will reduce by over 2 million pounds over the course of 20 years. Caetano also took a hard look at our transportation system in 2021. A robust transit system is critical for carbon neutrality, and it also creates a more equitable community. For community, with community surveys of 265 residents, focus groups of Black and Latinx residents, and feedback from more than a dozen social service providers, C3 is confident that the 14 recommendations outlined in our report will help to ensure a cleaner and more mobile Charlottesville. Be on the lookout for our advocacy campaign, which will launch in November. We will need all of your voices to secure the local governmental action needed to build a better and cleaner system. Here is C3 partner, Peter Thompson. Hello, Peter, he's on the call tonight, talking about why effective transit is a must for our community. Uh, so I'm Peter Thompson, I'm the executive director at the center, also known as the center at Belvedere. So the regional transit partnership, the RTP, um, I sit as a non-voting member of representing the Charlottesville Area Alliance, uh, the center and Java and many other organizations helped form a, an informal consortium of folks working for nature in the community several years ago. And we have picked transit as one of the key dimensions of an age friendly community to focus our energies on. And uh, the alignment from the center standpoint between the Green Business Alliance and the Regional Transit Partnership is absolutely a lie. Um, I don't think one necessarily led to the other, but the idea that the center as a major player in the community, we have a $20 million beautiful new 60,000 square foot center that we want to be as a resource for people. People need to be able to get to it. Um, and environmental wellness is part of our mission. It's part of what research has shown is key to holistic wellness. You can't age well if you don't have healthy air and healthy water and a healthy environment, plain and simple. Um, it's the center is very committed to improving transit, whether that's getting CAT to our front door, which is supposed to happen before the new year, um, to helping JOT and look at its uh, on-demand services that they're looking to pilot, um, to working with the county and other players. So we need to do more than that because those two are not going to be all the answers. They're not going to be in a single answer to transit from an economic standpoint. A aging accessibility standpoint. I'm excited about where our work with C3. Uh, I'm excited that the transit is, is getting a higher priority. Uh, I'm excited about the opportunities to do more together. Thank you, Peter. And thanks for being on the call tonight. And thanks for letting uh, Maggie come out to interview you. Peter and the center are also a member of C3's newly launched Green Business Alliance. The 16 businesses who are participating trusted C3 with multiple years of energy and fuel consumption data in order to calculate their greenhouse gas emissions profile. This inspiring group is committing to reduce their emissions by 45% by 2025. 
some of them are on, some of these leaders are on the call tonight. Uh, I think Maggie's going to do some shout outs in the chat to all these leaders. So feel free to thank them as well. Their goal is five years ahead of the city and county's goals for reduction. This will lead to a total greenhouse gas emissions reduction of 13,156 metric tons of CO2 per year. Next year, we'll be working with them to create individual climate action plans, including on-site solar, building electrification, fleet conversions, and utility-scale solar opportunities. We will also add a second cohort of business leaders to our Green Business Alliance. Governor Ralph Northam had this to say when he joined the Green Business Alliance launch in May. But anyway, we've had the climate commission in, in Virginia and we listened to the data and we, we said at the meeting and said, well, we really need to get out there and take the action. And then we really never have. And so the past few years, we have been able to work together and, and really understand what we're up against as a society. Formation of the Green Business Alliance with your group of forward-looking businesses committed to reducing pollution and acting on climate provides another power resource to help Virginia meet its climate goals. It was a great launch uh, that day. And if you subscribe to C3's YouTube channel, you can watch the whole video of that launch and see all the great businesses who participated in that event. Um, not every member of our community, though, can easily access solutions to lower energy costs and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. That's why the C3 team works to connect small businesses and residents with resources for action. Our Energy Efficiency Grant Program for Small and BIPOC-led businesses awarded five grants this year in conjunction with Charlottesville's Office of Economic Development. We hope to increase our grant amounts in 2022. We've also been hosting energy clinics around town this fall. Latricia and Terry just got back from another one. Thank you both for doing that. Latricia has been signing up residents for one-on-one -on -one consultations to help folks navigate available programs to reduce energy use and meet people, meeting people where they are and helping to increase their comfort with participating in these programs. Now I want to yield the floor to C3's uh, board president, Gray McLean, who is our founder and has probably the best perspective about where we started as an organization and where we are headed. So Gray, let me just, let me just mute myself and hand it over to you. Thanks, Susan. Um, first of all, let me thank all of you for taking the time. Really sincerely appreciate it. I know it's one more thing and a list of things and it's this whole zoom era of zoom has uh, gone on way too long uh, but so so susan asked me to to really share how i really feel about climate action and c3 uh, which is a dangerous ask so i've been on the hairy edge of of uh thinking about the impacts of climate uh, over the last couple weeks and so I'm not sure whether I'm gonna get really loud or I'm gonna break down in tears or, or what's gonna happen. So you're just gonna to have to bear with me. Um, so, you know, Susan just referenced kind of talking about where we started. And I just wanted to kind of, you know, a couple of things I knew when, when founded C3 back in 2018. And I knew our whole community had to engage. I didn't know what that exactly looked like. I had some very naive ideas about what that would be, be like, there's a lot of kumbaya involved. Um, I, I, I knew we had a whole community had engaged and I knew the communities, not just Charlottesville, but across Virginia and ultimately across the world were going to be central, right? And to both reducing emissions and adapting to the impacts of climate change as, as they come to our, uh, our doorsteps, which we were already experiencing. Um, and what I know now is that that I was right about the community component, right? That communities are going to be central. They are central. They will be central. Um, but what I didn't know is that what it really meant to meet each part of that community where they were. So whether that is um, the Latinx community, whether that is the business community, whether that is 10th and Page, whether that is the nonprofits, whether that is, uh, you know, even the government uh, entities and municipalities, 
understanding where they are and working with them directly. I didn't understand what that meant. And C3, the staff of C3 has really taught me what that has meant uh, over the last couple of years. Um, the other thing I didn't know was how much local, excuse me, climate policy was dependent on the final mile, right? Which is really what C3 is about. You know, we've had unprecedented state level action over the last few years. And I watch, I support a lot of the organizations that help make that happen. Um, but I also see how dependent that final mile is in terms of getting energy efficiency done, getting uh, solar installed, getting um, organizations to be even aware of the opportunities. And that's what C3 does. I also didn't really know, understand when I, when I started in 2018 versus how, where we are today, how much overlap there was between community issues and climate issues. You know, so often people talk about climate and they just think about federal policy, they just think about polar bears, and they just think they're able to quickly put it in a box and move it off to the side. And the reality is, when we talk about climate action, we're talking about transit, and we're talking about affordable housing, and we're talking about fuel switching, and we are I'll talk about land use. We're talking about transit-oriented development. Lots of really, really wonky, boring, important, and critically important stuff. That is another thing that C3 is absolutely knocking the ball out of the park on. Um, there is no other organization in the Commonwealth of Virginia that is combining local climate, detailed local climate analysis with the outreach and concierge service that C3 is delivering. It just isn't happening, right? Like I, in, in my day job of working uh, with a foundation, I work with lots of fantastic organizations and none of them are doing what C3 is doing at the local level. Um, and it's only gonna be more important going forward. Um, there's no other organization, uh, and so let me, let me put a little caveat here. I don't mean to run roughshod over any of your favorite organizations in my next couple of statements. Um, I love a lot of them too, but there's no other organization that I know of that is working with um, a diverse array of BIPOC communities and really listening to their voice and making sure that what they are seeing is actually appearing in the data that we are bringing forth to leaders to make decisions just not happening. Um, and so proud of C3 for what it's doing there. Um, you know, at the end of the day, like our local, our, our local elected officials need hard data to take action on this stuff. And there's a dearth of it. There's just, it's just absent. And with the exception of what I think C3 is, is bringing to the table. Um, and, uh, it's pretty, I'm so proud of um, Susan and Caetano and the rest of the team on that front. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, and there's no also, and again, this is where I'm gonna run rough shot. I know no other organization that is commit, as committed to equity um, as C3 is. And I don't just mean in terms of staff and board composition, but I'm talking about in terms of what their work actually focuses on and how they bring it to bear. So I'm incredibly proud of what uh, C3 is doing for Charlottesville and Alamo County. Um, I'm hopeful about what it might do for other communities uh, in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, and I really appreciate all of you for being, being our supporters. So with that, I made it through without breaking into tears. I'll, I'll toss it back to Susan. Thanks, Gray. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, and just working alongside Gray and the board has been the, the privilege of my career and being able to build this incredible team uh, and work with all of you as supporters, as partner organizations. It, I, I just feel incredibly fortunate to be a part of this organization at this time. So um, if there's one message that I want you to get out of tonight, it's that we can't do it alone, uh, not any of it, not the implementation of our programs, our policy advocacy, but we also can't reach our climate goals as a community unless we work together. 
this is a fundraiser event. Uh, many of you have already committed or pledged uh, your contribution. So thank you so much. This is the decade where we will win or lose the battle to prevent the most catastrophic impacts of climate change. It's up to us, all of us. Uh, the demand for our work, for C3's work, is ever increasing daily. Uh, we get new requests from businesses, from community partners, from schools for how to get more involved in climate and get engaged with C3. Uh, we need to make sure there's a C3 staff person to meet the, those needs when they arise. So thanks to all our generous supporters. We're very close to reaching our fundraising goals uh, for this campaign. We still need to raise another $20,000 before the end of the year. Uh, I think Maggie is gonna put um, a link in the chat if you're able to make a gift tonight, that would be fantastic. Thanks again to all of you who have already done so. I hope you will help us close our fundraising gap and ensure strong footing for C3 in 2022. Uh, you can also volunteer. I also want to give a shout out to volunteer Sarah Delgado, who's new to our team, uh, just having joined recently, is doing just a fantastic job. She's created an easy way to sign up to volunteer with C3. Uh, we're going to need the help in 2022. And already, you know, this in the past two months, we've had more events than we've been able to actually attend to table. And we're going to be needing your voices on advocacy. So you can sign up not just to table or to volunteer, you can sign up to um, write, to take photos, to advocate. We need people who are willing to speak at governmental meetings. So all of that is available on our sign up form. So thank you, Sarah. Uh, so while folks are signing up to volunteer or make a gift, I am happy to uh, stop sharing my screen and take your questions and hear from you um, what are some things that you would like to see three do C3 taking on in the new year. Oh, there we go. Now I can see everyone. That's so nice. Oh, look, Devin's there with his kiddos. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Oh, well, I was just going to say we don't have any questions in the chat right now. So if anybody just wants to go ahead and raise their hand, we can unmute and then you can ask your questions. I see Cynthia. Yeah, so one of the things that I was most taken with, hey, Judy, was um, that you recently got a, 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 an electric car. And I mean, you know, we see a lot of Teslas around town, but, you know, I've, you have this car. And I asked you, you know, like, so is it easy and is it fun? But I mean, it's like, should we all be driving electric cars? Uh, yes. Um, so the thing is uh, that Virginia, the Commonwealth has set a goal to have a carbon neutral grid by 2040. And so by powering, by choosing, when, whenever it's time to purchase your next vehicle, uh, by choosing an electric car every year that you are fueling up your electric car, powering it up, your emissions will be going down. Uh, we also need to be supporting transit. So just as much as we need to support electrifying people choosing electric for their cars, we also need to make sure solutions that don't require cars are available in our communities. So I just want to stress that as well. Um, but I guess I do love my electric car. Um, I got it used. So I'm here to say that the used EV market is now has the battery power to get you where you need to go. My 2019 Nissan Leaf gets 220 miles on a charge. So I really feel like um, the used EVs are now at a price point where they're more accessible to everyone. So folks who may not have been able to do in the past might be able to do so now. Um, so definitely encourage that. I think I've got a blog that's coming out this week about how I electrified my car and my home in the past year. And so my overall emissions are down by 50%. Uh, and they're going to keep going down every year because I'm all electric. Yep. Okay, well, I'll call you. We'll, we'll open a bottle of wine and you can help me figure out how to do the same thing. All right, we'll do. I'm in. Uh, hey, Susan. Uh, Brian Sousa here. Hey, Brian. How Good, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, I just wanted to um, let everybody know um, that as a Realtor, I tithe 10% of every 
commission I receive to nonprofits and my clients get to choose the uh, beneficiary after the uh, transaction closes. And one of the organizations on the list of nonprofits I like to support happens to be C3. So while uh, I don't have boatloads of money to donate, uh, I hope that that will be something beneficial to you all. And I just wanted to let people know that. So this isn't really a question, but I wanted to kind of let you know that that's something that I'm doing. And um, if you don't see any large donation coming from me, that's because I, I, I simply can't do that. But with my, with my business bottle, I'm hoping to help. Awesome. Yay, thank you. Sure. I, I have a question. Yes, hi, Robin. Hi. Um, I don't really get that um, Charlottesville transportation works. I think that people are still begging for more uh, electric buses and vehicles that are even Uber um, generated or whatever. But worse uh, thing that I think that this city really needs to fix is the traffic. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, even Chick-fil-A annoys me. You know, the idea that people are idling for three minutes at a traffic that, you know, there's like, there's, it, it just doesn't make sense. The grid doesn't make any sense. Do you hear anything from the Department of Transportation that, uh, and things like that where we can fix um, people idling in, 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 in rush hour, which in Charlottesville, <laughs> it's not New York City, but it acts like it. It's yeah. that, yeah. So do you know what, do you know what is going so on with so there, I don't think there is an idling ordinance. I mean, I think that's something a lot of people have raised. Um, but I do know that the county has, has sort of, and a lot of businesses are sort of telling their employees they can't idle when they're using their fleet vehicles. And I think some some private uh, pol some private uh, businesses are instituting those uh, requirements of their staff, and hopefully that'll continue to catch on. But the great thing, and when you have EVs. Um, is they're just quiet and there's no emissions. Even when you're sitting there, you're not even using the battery really. Uh, so idling isn't really a thing when you switch to electric. That's the where I'm hoping we're headed in the future. Yeah. Other questions? Susan, I just put it in the chat, but I have a couple of friends looking at electric vehicles and they were trying to find trusted electricians. Do you guys have C3 endorsed electricians to help install outlets and garages? Um, we don't necessarily at this moment in time, but I do know our partner at Carter Myers Automotive who we worked with uh, closely for a number of years and they've worked really hard to both promote EVs and uh, reduce their emissions of their own at their own business. They have some recommendations. And so I would trust uh, their recommendations on, on this. I still haven't installed my charger in my home. So Neeral, as soon as I do that, I'll be happy to share with you uh, who we use. Put it up on a blog post. Yeah. Yeah. I'll add it. I'll add it to my blog post. So I'm still using a trickle charge uh, right now from my outlet. So, which takes a long time, but we'll, we'll get that fixed soon. Is it the new washer and dryer or the fast charger? We're trying to figure out which one happens before Christmas, but we'll get there. Somebody, looks like Terry also put in the chat which one she uses. Other thoughts or questions? Oh, yep, yeah, Cynthia's got another one. You're muted, Cynthia. I just have to say that I think I'm very worried about this upcoming election, you know, which is, is not part of C3, but but I think people are so kind of burnt out on on COVID and you know are and and I think a lot of people in the past year more than ever have become terrified that we have ruined the planet. 
And I think that there's this, you know, I mean, it brings tears to your eye. I mean, it was like Gray was saying, how do you not cry about this? You know, it's like, we have destroyed the planet we live on. And it's like, I don't sense that there's this huge, you know, initiative or effort. I think there is here and that's why I support what you're doing. But it's like, how do we get people to pay attention and find and realize that we are in danger of losing, you know, the world that we know. I don't know. I don't want to be a bummer, but it's like, it really troubles me that um, the planet is in jeopardy. Yeah. I mean, I, I hear that a hundred percent. I mean, I, I think about my kids and so, you know, my son, Evan will be, you know, in his forties, uh, which I am now, um, when we hit 2050, when we're supposed to be carbon neutral, will we be, and what kind of planet will he have when we get there? And that's something I think about every day. And it's one of the reasons why I really love working at C3 is because we do focus on where we're seeing progress and we do celebrate it. That's one of the reasons why we do celebrate as much as we do, because climate is, uh, it's a pretty intense and can be a very depressing and, and disempowering topic, right? Where people feel like they can't make an impact. But by focusing on success where we find it, by, um, but not by um, hiding where the problems are, right? We're not trying to say it's all good and every, we're just, everybody's taking action. There are things we need to fix. And so we can't uh, shy away from that. And that's, I think, what a lot of our policy work is about. It's a lot about what Latricia is trying to do with her outreach and through our energy clinics. And, um, but we've got to celebrate action where it's happening. I mean, Virginia has so many solar projects in the pipeline that it's hard, it's hard to get them approved. And so our government systems are needing to catch up. So that gives me hope when I hear, I, it gives me hope and despair at the same time. We've got so many solar projects in the pipeline that we're a little backed up and we can't get them approved fast enough. So how do we fix uh, that approval process so we can reach carbon neutrality faster. More and more people, um, I'm encouraged that EVs are now at a price point where, you know, folks can afford them and that more and more solar is happening. I hear more people talking about transit than I have ever heard before. It seems like a lot of groups are really focusing on it, understanding we need fewer roads. We need more uh, housing near to cities. We need that housing to be affordable. And people need to be able to reach services without having to get in a car. And we need more green space to help reduce emission through carbon sequestration. And all of that means less roads, less parking, more dense uh, transit oriented affordable communities. So those are the things we're trying to work on. And I think we just have to build our piece right here. And our hope is that see what we're building here will, will grow and that we will open an office in Richmond in the next year or the next two years. That is where we're headed as an organization because it's great to do this work right here, but we know because the climate crisis is so significant that it's not enough. So we need to grow uh, and we're ready to do that. We're excited about it, um, but we need your support to help us get there because what we're trying to do is build a model here that we can then take and other communities can learn from it and they can pick up where we've started and implement these changes in their community. Can I add on to what you said, Susan? Yeah. So Cynthia, I'm glad you're upset, right? Like we need more people upset, right? And I'm not saying I don't want it to turn to despair. I don't want it to turn into to inaction because people get upset, but like there's something to be mourned. Like we, we've lost things that we can't bring back and we're gonna lose things that we can't bring back. And that's that's the reality. But we but every every pound of CO2 that we prevent from going into the atmosphere is one infinitesimal degree of warmth that doesn't enter the atmosphere. Um, and one of the things that I think C3 does that's really good is and it reaches back to what I was saying earlier. You have to meet people where they are. I think there are a lot of people that are scared. I think there are a lot of people that are upset. But if they don't see action, 
they don't they don't see a way to act they don't see other people acting they don't see anyone to join hand, arms with um they're less likely to do so and one of the things that you know they're going into these communities um, and connecting the dots between affordable housing and climate um, and getting people to understand how these things connect is a way to give people hope like, oh, well, the, I, I can take action and my neighbor's taking action and, and the community's taking action. So um, the, the, the loss is real uh, and it's not something that we should shy away from, but it's also something that we can't let overwhelm us. And, as it overwhelms my speech. So, uh, yeah, I, I, Cynthia, you being upset, it just means I have another, uh, you know, comrade in arms out there who's, who's equally uh, upset about what's going on and also equally committed to trying to make a difference. So thank you for being upset. <laughs> Susan and Gray, do you guys mind if I provide an example of something that C3 has done that I think is relevant to Cynthia's question as well. Um, I feel like I'm Morgan Butler, I'm on C3's board, and I wanted to say that I am um, on the mission and service committee for my church, uh, St. Paul's Memorial Church on the EVA corner. And as part of that committee, we have a group of folks who are really interested in climate equity work. And uh, I think like a lot of you, people are just sort of feeling overwhelmed and daunted by the challenge. And we're having a hard time figuring out how the committee could engage in, in this huge challenging issue in a meaningful way. And so we reached out to C3 and Latricia Giles, who was new to the job and just moved from North Carolina, um, worked with our entire church to do the home energy challenge. And it was a way for, for folks in our church to, um, you know, get tangibly involved in trying to reduce their emissions at their homes. And they were able to see that it, it did make a difference, that they were able to take some pretty common sense, easy actions that help them reduce their emissions and save money. And I think everybody had a lot of fun with it, but where I'm going with this and, and what's more important is that that involvement, that small degree of involvement, I saw it make a difference in these people and how they approached this climate issue and the daunting nature of it. I think they were able to see that, you know, they can make a difference. And, and when they work with others, these are small differences, but uh, incremental, but they, they accumulate. And it just made everyone that much more engaged. It, it brought, sort of brought them out of that sense of um, being overwhelmed. And now the committee is, is we have folks who are uh, clamoring to, to get more involved with advocacy actions related to climate in the city and the county. And so, um, you know, C3 really is a catalyst for this. And through the, the work and the contributions they're making, um, you know, I think they're allowing people to, to see that this is something where we can all make a difference. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Morgan. Uh, yeah, and thanks, Latricia, for inspiring uh, Morgan to say that. Uh, thanks for your work. Um, I, we really do believe that as people take action, they become advocates. So even by, you know, we meet people every day who want to get engaged. Some people are ready to go big and they want to make their building net zero or they want to put a big solar project on. Some people are just brand new and are trying to figure out which HVAC system they should buy or, um, or just where they should start on advocacy. And every time somebody engages in one action, we find that they then feel much more confident advocating for climate in lots of spaces. So we are trying to build climate leaders in this community across all sectors so that when C3 staff can't be in the room, we're only six of us, um, we're, I'm happy to share, we're gonna add another staff person here at the end of this month. I can tell you more about him in a minute, but um, you know, th the more people take action, the more they are ready to be advocates for this community and for climate. So yeah, there are only six of us, we need leaders in all spaces. Uh, we will be adding a seventh staff member, Coles Jennings will be our director of corporate sustainability. And he is going to be leading our Green Business Alliance. Uh, and he comes from the private sector. He works at an engineering firm, uh, Mason and Hang Hanger right now. 
He's been doing energy performance contracts for federal governmental buildings. And he's gonna be able to take these businesses and build actionable plans to help them reach their goals. And we're really excited to have him on board. He's gonna add a whole new element to assist our businesses in real tangible ways. Um, and he starts on November 29th. So I hope when he joins everybody, particularly our businesses on this call, uh, give him a warm welcome. And uh, you know, if your business is on this call and wants to be more involved in climate action, then uh, that'll be a moment to connect with Coles too. Happy to see Kelly join, Kelly Palmer. Sorry, I'm not trying to call you out because you're late. I'm just happy to see you. <laughs> I was on audio. Oh, good. She was on by phone before. I, I'd like to uh, piggyback on uh, uh, promising things that happened 2020. Uh, during the pandemic, um, I was able to tell people who came into my house to retrofit my house, um, you know, to glove and, and, and made a trail and everything to go up to the attic. Anyway, I now spend hundred dollars less a month but they came in and they changed every single light bulb <laughs> they they put in um the insulation in my attic doubled it they did a lot of retrofitting and i just want to say that it was because i was with climate action groups who were trying to figure out how to get this mobilized and if it wasn't for c3 i don't think i would have done it and so I just want to say, I think you're absolutely right. Just keep going, you know, just keep advocating, just keep setting up tables and people will see that it's simple things, measures. And, and uh, I think you're absolutely great. Thank you, Robin. Yeah, our energy clinics as well. So there are millions and millions of dollars available at the state level through utilities and state funded energy efficiency programs that most people don't know exist or they think there's a catch or that it means they've got to pay something in the end and uh, for in lower income seniors uh, and veterans there are some great programs and you might be surprised by how low the qualifying uh, amount is so if you're a senior over 60 and you make less than i think it's like hundred and twelve thousand dollars a year you qualify and you can get a lot of energy efficiency services completely paid for. And so C3 is out there in the community right now trying to let people know that these programs exist because they can help you reduce your energy bills. And we've got a lot of people paying high energy bills in Virginia. And we've got to get the word out about these programs because we need um, these, this, these funds to be well utilized. And we need probably 300 homes every year in Charlottesville getting substantial energy efficiency measures happening. And uh, so we've got more, 300 more than are happening right now. So we've got a lot of work to do and we're ready to hit the streets and get it done. All right, I wanna give a chance for anybody on the team who may wanna say something on the C3 team. I've been talking a lot and our whole team's on the call and I just wanna give them some love and let them say something if they want. Hey, uh, I wasn't planning to say that. Thank you all for coming here and um, for supporting this work. I just was, um, the. Cynthia's comment got me thinking. I just want to say it's very tough to get all the planets uh, aligned for humanity to solve climate change, etc. Right? But I think that we must do our best to uh, prove how it can work in the best way possible at community levels, especially small towns. Uh, lots of the majority, the vast majority of cities that have bold uh, climate policies and climate um, targets, they are not small as our communities. They are usually 300,000 people over. Uh, so by doing good work with small cities, which is a very pioneer vanguard type of work, we are making, um, if we are successful, we are making life easier for future governors and presidents to look at us as models of what policies can work in smaller communities to solve climate change moving forward. So uh, let's just hope, cr fingers crossed, that good presents are, are coming in the next decades. And then we, they can look at us as examples 
of how to address climate change and emissions in community levels. So that's one of the things that's inspired me. Thanks, Kai. Anybody else on the team? Terry, you want to add anything? I know you were just out at an energy clinic. How was it? I'm a little fried, so I was going to like step back a little bit, but I do. I'm, I'm so grateful for your leadership, for our board, for everybody on this call. I mean, you know, we get in the weeds. We're an ambitious, busy team, and it's it's kind of nice to sit sit here and see the big picture and to just know that you all are behind us uh doing the good work so yeah i'm just super grateful so thank you oh that's my son <laughs> the younger generation <laughs> mary had a, a triple event night where she was leading the green schools network at 4 30 over at the energy clinic until 6 30 and then on to this so um lot, busy evening at c3 all right. Well, I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything. I'll give uh, staff any or anybody else one, one last thing. I just really want to um, thank you all for being here and um, your partnership, your support uh, by the financial, but also your advocacy, your willingness to show up for another Zoom event. Um, I just am so grateful for all of you and happy to have you here with us. And I really can't wait till we can do this in person. Um, we, we had all the hopes that we were gonna do it in person uh, this fall and so, but you can come to that event on November 17th at the Virginia Red Cross um, on Rose Hill Drive and see our climate mural, have some snacks. Um, I think we might try to have, if he's available, the pie guy come and uh, cater the event. So he's one of our energy efficiency past energy efficiency grant recipient. So it'd be great to have him there. And um, yeah, just meet our teens and just see where we're headed as an organization. It'd be nice to celebrate in person. So I hope you can come. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you have a great evening. Thanks so much for being here.